Welcome friends. Today we are going to understand leverage. Leverage analysis. A finance manager is required to take three types of decisions. Number one, financing decisions. Number two, investment decisions. Number three, dividend decisions. In order to take these decisions, financial management equips the manager with various techniques. Leverage analysis is a technique which will help a manager to take the financing decisions. Financing decision is deciding the proportion of debt and equity in the capital structure of a firm. Whenever a manager takes certain decisions, he needs to analyze the various factors. The risk and return attached with the decisions are two important factors. These two important factors are analyzed by the leverage analysis. Let's understand the meaning of word leverage. Leverage is analysis of relationship between two interrelated variables. Whenever I said two interrelated variables, there has to be a one dependent variable and one independent variable. For example, an advertisement expenditure and a sales amount. Now here, sales amount is dependent on advertisement expenditure, generally. Here we are going to understand two interrelated financial variables. And these two variables are risk and return. Let's understand risk first. Risk is defined as uncertainty attached with the future. For example, there is uncertainty regarding the government regulations. There is uncertainty regarding raw material prices. There is uncertainty regarding the management. There is uncertainty regarding the demand and supply for the product of the business, there is uncertainty regarding the technology used by the business. These uncertainties are technically called as risks. And these risks typically affect the return available to the shareholder. Risk is again classified into two types. Number one, operating risk and number two, financial risk. Operating risk is uncertainty relating to the operations of the business. The examples of operating risk would be the risk attached with the government rules and regulations, risk attached with the change in raw material prices, risk due to the competition coming up in the market, etc. A financial risk refers to additional risk that is taken by the shareholders due to the use of debt capital in the capital structure of a firm. Whenever a firm uses debt capital, it involves falling to risk. Number one, risk relating to the payment of interest. And number two, risk relating to repayment of principal amount. These two additional risks are carried out by the shareholder whenever firm uses debt. Now my friend, the operating risk and financial risk affect the return available to the shareholders and the impact of these risks on the return available to the shareholder is analyzed by operating leverage and financial leverage respectively. Let's understand the return now. We are going to understand the return from the viewpoint of the equity shareholders of the company. Equity shareholders are entitled to receive the dividend only after payment of preference dividend. Let's prepare a profitability statement and try to understand what is available to the equity shareholder. Profitability statement. First, we take sales. From the sales amount, we'll deduct 
variable cost which gives us contribution. From contribution we deduct fixed operating cost which gives us earnings before interest and taxes that is EBIT. From EBIT we deduct interest amount which leads us to earnings before tax EBT or profit before tax PBT. From EBT we deduct the income tax payable at the current rates which gives us profit after tax or earnings after tax. From this profit after tax firm has to pay the preference dividend inclusive of dividend distribution tax. So when we deduct preference dividend from profit after tax we get earnings available to equity shareholders. These earnings available to equity shareholders are divided by number of equity shares and that gives us earnings per share. Let's now understand the mathematical definition of leverage. Leverage is equal to percentage change in dependent variable upon percentage change in independent variable. This formula answers the following question. For 1% change in independent variable, how much will be the change in dependent variable? This is a basic formula for other formulas of operating leverage and financial leverage. Now let's understand the meaning of operating leverage. Operating leverage is the ability of a business to use fixed operating cost to increase the effect of change in sales on change in operating income that is EBIT. Let's understand this definition. Whenever firm has certain fixed costs in its cost structure and there is an increase in sales amount, the fixed cost remains same even if there is an increase in sales since fixed costs are incurred for a particular capacity. Now if you analyze, your sales has increased but fixed cost has not increased. I can also say that the contribution amount has increased with increase in sales without any change in fixed cost. So obviously our EBIT is going to increase with a more percentage than increase in sales. Understand my statement carefully? The EBIT has increased by a larger percentage than the percentage change in sales. This is due to presence of fixed cost in the cost structure of a firm. And this is analyzed by the operating leverage. Now we will analyze this operating leverage from different different angles. Let's try to understand. Analysis number one. Calculation of degree of operating leverage. Degree of operating leverage measures the operating risk at a particular level. Degree of operating leverage is equal to percentage change in EBIT divided by percentage change in sales. Now whenever we use this particular formula, we need to observe following two things carefully. Number one, this formula requires the information of cells at two levels. Number two, this formula gives us the degree of operating leverage at base level. Base level is the level which is used in the denominator. 
एनालिसिस नंबर टू इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ डिग्री ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग लिवरेज लेट्स से योर सेल्स हैज चेंज बाय 20 परसेंट बट योर ईबीआईटी हैज चेंज बाय 60 परसेंट सो वी गेट परसेंटेज चेंज इन ईबीआईटी दैट इज 60 परसेंट अपॉन परसेंटेज चेंज इन सेल्स दैट इज 20 परसेंट सो 60 परसेंट अपॉन 20 परसेंट वी हैव अ डिग्री ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग लिवरेज इक्वल टू थ्री वट डू यू मीन बाय दिस थ्री डिग्री ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग लिवरेज इंडिकेट्स दैट फॉर वन परसेंट चेंज इन सेल्स हाउ मच विल बी द चेंज इन ईबीआईटी सो हियर डिग्री ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग लिवरेज ऑफ थ्री इंडिकेट्स दैट इफ देर इज अ चेंज इन सेल्स बाय वन परसेंट the ebit will change by 3% that is to say if your sales change by 25% your ebit will change by 75% please understand this change is in same direction that is if sales increase ebit will also increase if sales decrease ebit will also decrease change means increase or decrease as the case may be analysis number 3 operating leverage measures the operating risk operating risk may be defined as risk of recovering the fixed cost a firm has to earn the amount of contribution enough to recover the fixed cost in case these fixed costs are not recovered out of the contribution a firm faces a situation of operating loss so the operating risk refers to risk of recovering the fixed costs now operating risk decreases with the increase in sales that is there is a inverse relationship between the sales and operating risk with increase in sales the amount of contribution also increases the fixed costs are net out of the contribution so with increase in sales a larger amount of contribution is available to incur or to meet the same fixed cost so the margin available is more and hence operating risk also decreases remember the example of basketball cricket ball and a goti with increase in sales the risk decreases operating risk decreases analysis number 4 alternative formula for operating leverage we have understood one formula percentage change in ebit upon percentage change in sales however that formula can be used only when two levels are available we have a alternative formula which can be used when information about one level of sales is available that formula is as follows operating leverage is equal to contribution upon ebit i repeat operating leverage is equal to contribution upon ebit my friend operating leverage is calculated at a particular level if level changes operating leverage also changes analysis number 5 positive operating leverage indicates that firm is operating above operational break even point a operational break even point is a level of sales at which we have ebit equal to 0 so a positive ol will be there only if ebit is positive so i can conclude that positive ol means firm is operating above operational break even point analysis number 
Negative operating leverage indicates that firm is operating below operational break-even point. That is, firm is running with a operating loss, a negative EBIT. Analysis number seven. When EBIT is equal to zero, that is, at operational break-even point, the degree of operating leverage cannot be defined. It indicates that its OL cannot be calculated. Analysis number 8. If firm does not have the fixed operating costs in its cost structure, firm will not get a benefit of operating leverage. That is, if fixed costs are not there, Operating leverage will be always equal to 1. This is a bit theoretical situation because it's very difficult to find a business which has no fixed cost. The fixed costs per unit decrease with increase in sales or increase in production quantity. However, fixed costs in totality remain to be constant irrespective of change in sales level. Analysis number 9. Calculation of operational break-even point. Operational break-even point is a level of cells at which EBIT is equal to 0. That means there is no operating profit, no operating loss. Operational break-even point can be expressed either in terms of break-even quantity or in terms of break-even cells. Let's understand formula for break-even quantity. Break-even quantity is equal to total fixed cost in rupees. I'm saying total fixed cost in rupees divided by contribution per unit. Divided by contribution per unit. Understand a logic for this formula. Fixed costs are made out of contribution. I want to find out how many units should be sold so that my total contribution will be equal to total fixed cost. So I ask a simple question. If I sell one unit, how much is the contribution? I want total contribution to be equal to total cost total fixed cost so how many units i should sell in order to have contribution equal to fixed cost that leads me to the formula total fixed cost multiplied by one divided by contribution per unit that's the logic now let's understand the formula for operational break-even point in terms of rupees that is break-even cells break-even cells amount is equal to total fixed cost divided by profit volume ratio I repeat total fixed cost divided by profit volume ratio profit volume ratio may be calculated as contribution per unit divided by selling price per unit or total contribution divided by total sales. Let's understand the logic for this formula. If I sell goods worth rupees 100, I get a contribution equal to let's say rupees 40. 40 upon 100, 40%. This is nothing but profit volume ratio. Let's say my fixed cost is rupees 5 lakh. If I sell goods worth rupees 100, I get a contribution of rupees 40. I want total contribution to be equal to total fixed cost. So, my contribution should be equal to rupees 5 lakhs. So, in order to get the contribution of 5 lakh, how much should be my sales? I do the simple cross multiplication. 5 lakh multiplied by 100 divided by 40. Now, 
5 lakh is my fixed cost multiply by 100 divided by 40 I can say divided by 40 percent so 5 lakh divided by 40 percent is my break even sales so it gives me the formula total fixed cost divided by profit volume ratio now let's turn on to understand the financial leverage financial leverage is going to measure the financial risk involved in the business financial risk typically comes from use of debt in the capital structure we already seen it now whenever a firm goes for debt financing firm has to pay the interest on the amount of debt the interest is considered as a tax deductible expenditure under the tax laws however whenever a firm uses preferences in a part of its capital structure the preference dividend is not considered as a tax deductible a firm has to pay dividend distribution tax on the amount of preference dividend declared by it definition of financial leverage financial leverage is the ability of a business to use fixed financial cost to increase the effect of change in EBIT on change in earnings per share or earnings available to equity shareholders understand carefully ability to use fixed financial cost to increase the effect of change in EBIT on change in earnings per share few points to be noted out here number one fixed financial cost means interest and preference dividend whenever the sales of organization increase or EBIT of organization increases the amount of interest or the amount of preference dividend does not change it remains to be the same this gives the rise to the concept of financial leverage for example a firm has taken rupees 100 from a debenture holder has invested this 100 rupees in its business firm has earned rupees 20 on this amount however a firm pays interest of only 12 percent that is rupees 12 to the debenture holder my friend this balance of rupees 8 goes to the equity shareholder after reduction of income tax this is nothing but trading on equity and this concept gives a rise to the financial leverage we call it as malay the equity shareholders gain even if they have not invested the money they are gaining in this situation because they have taken a financial risk and they must be rewarded for their financial risk obviously risk and return goes hand in hand second point to be noted is financial leverage analyzes two variables EBIT and earnings per share earning per share is dependent on EBIT this will be useful in understanding the formula of financial leverage let's analyze the financial leverage from different different angles analysis number one calculation of degree of financial leverage degree of financial leverage is equal to percentage change in EPS upon percentage change in EBIT percentage change in EPS upon percentage change in EBIT this formula can be used only if two levels are available EPS was dependent and EBIT was independent analysis number two interpretation of degree of financial leverage financial leverage indicates how much will be the change in EPS for 1% change 
in EBIT. For example, change in EPS is 40%, whereas change in EBIT is 20%. We get financial leverage of 40% upon 20% is equal to 2. This 2 indicates that if EBIT changes by 1%, Earnings per share will change by 2% or earnings available to equity shareholders will change by 2%. Analysis number 3. Financial leverage measures the financial risk. Financial risk decreases with the increase in level of EBIT. Simple logic. When your EBIT increases, the amount available to pay the interest or a fixed financial cost also increases. So obviously the risk carried out by the shareholders decreases. This is decrease in the financial risk with increase in EBIT or vice versa. Analysis number 4. Trading on equity or Malay. Whenever a firm uses a debt and a firm earns more than the rate of interest or the rate of dividend, the firm gets a benefit of financial leverage. The incremental amount earned goes to the equity shareholders. So I can say that whenever firm's return on investment is more than the rate of interest, financial leverage is beneficial. Whenever rate of interest is more than the return on investment, financial leverage is not beneficial and whenever return on investment and rate of interest are same financial leverage is neither beneficial nor harmful to the organization understand return on investment is also known as return on capital employees it is calculated as follows ROI or ROCE is equal to earnings before interest and taxes EBIT divided by total capital employed EBIT divided by total capital employed total capital employed comprises of debt capital as well as equity capital analysis number five alternative formula for financial leverage financial leverage is equal to EBIT upon EBT minus preference dividend divided by 1 minus T understand carefully financial leverage is equal to EBIT divided by EBT minus preference dividend divided by 1 minus t understand preference dividend has to be taken including dividend distribution tax and divided by 1 minus t is applicable only to the preference dividend and not to the earnings before tax remember this carefully analysis number six financial leverage will be there only if there are fixed financial costs if there is no fixed financial cost, there is no financial leverage or financial leverage will be equal to 1. That was financial leverage. Now let's turn on to the final part, combined leverage. Combined leverage is going to analyze the relationship between sales and earnings per share. It will answer the following question. If sales change by 1%, how much will be the change in earnings per share? Combined leverage can be calculated by the following formula. Combined leverage is equal to operating leverage multiplied by financial leverage or combined leverage is equal to contribution upon EBT minus preference dividend divided by 1 minus T. Combined leverage indicates for 1% in change in sales, how much will be the change in earnings per share or earnings available to equity shareholder. 
so we have summarized the entire understanding of the leverage chapter now let's understand some formulas which we have used in this particular chapter understanding the formulas used in the leverage i would request you to revise this formulas along with me as soon as i tell the formula please revise this formula in your mind formula number 1 basic meaning of leverage leverage is equal to percentage change in dependent variable upon percentage change in independent variable formula number 2 degree of operating leverage percentage change in ebit upon percentage change in sales my friend this formula requires two levels of sales alternatively i can calculate operating leverage as contribution upon ebit formula number 3 financial leverage financial leverage is equal to percentage change in eps divided by percentage change in ebit alternatively ebit upon ebt minus preference dividend including dividend distribution tax divided by 1 minus t this divided by 1 minus t is applicable only to term pd formula number 4 combined leverage is equal to percentage change in eps upon percentage change in sales or operating leverage into financial leverage or ebit upon ebt minus preference dividend divided by 1 minus t formula number 5 operational break even point operational break even point in terms of quantity that is break even quantity break even quantity is equal to total fixed cost divided by contribution per unit break even sales is equal to total fixed cost divided by profit volume ratio formula 6 profit volume ratio profit volume ratio is equal to contribution per unit divided by selling price per unit or total contribution divided by total sales formula number 7 earnings per share earnings per share is equal to earnings available to equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares formula number 8 return on investment or return on capital employed roi oblique roc is equal to operating profit divided by total capital employed which comprises of debt as well as equity formula number 9 return on equity return on equity is equal to earnings available to equity shareholders divided by amount of equity or earnings per share divided by face value per share or we understood one malai wala formula or return on equity is equal to roce into 1 minus t plus amount of debt into bracket roc minus rate of interest this into 1 minus t bracket complete divided by amount of equity formula number 10 asset turnover ratio asset turnover ratio is equal to net sales divided by total assets net worth formula number 11 net worth is equal to share capital plus reserves and surplus thank you